Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast, Episode 639. Unexpected Beneficial Results of Testosterone and Estradiol Pellets in Women. Part 2. BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about anti-aging medicine. Your host is Dr. Kathy Moffat, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging. Dr. Maupin is the author of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about testosterone replacement therapy for women, and Got Testosterone, the award-winning book for men that helps men choose the most effective and safe form of testosterone replacement. These books are available on Amazon or from Dr. Maupin's office at BioBalance Health in St. Louis and in Kansas City. Dr. Maupin's office is currently accepting new patients. Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast. I'm Dr. Kathy Maupin, and today we're going to finish our discussion about the benefits of using estradiol and testosterone pellets and some of the benefits that you don't even think about when you decide that you need to replace your hormones after your ovaries have stopped making estradiol and testosterone. So uh, last week we talked about some of the some of the surprises I had when I started using estradiol and testosterone uh, to treat my patients. And I usually and was trained to um, think about the the problems people have, women have after menopause, like hot flashes or night sweats or um, painful intercourse. But I also was uh, not trained in what women uh, lose as they go through menopause, which is their sex drive. So when I began practice 21 years ago, those are the primary things I told my patients about. And I said, this can help you. So you need to uh, look at the treatment with estradiol and testosterone pellets. It's quite different than oral medications. It's different than patches. It's different than almost anything else that you can get your hormones uh, from or with. And it's much better than using herbs and, um, and diet, which honestly just don't work. So uh, when I started this, that's what I treated. And then I started getting lots of feedback from my patients who would come in and say, oh yeah, I've got a great sex drive. My husband and I get along. This is great. Um, my hot flashes are gone. But you know, my insomnia is gone. Or, you know, I don't get migraines anymore. So these are some of those benefits that I learned as I went along training, or excuse me, teaching people about their hormones and also getting feedback from them when they'd come back and give me the good news about how successful their treatment was. So I'm going to go over some things that I've learned and that I now treat with both testosterone and estradiol pellets. Last week, we talked about some autoimmune diseases and some other diseases that get better when I use testosterone and estradiol. This week, we're going to start with um, things that are urologic. Um, when One of the things that most women have who have had a baby or even a, a pregnancy is stress urinary incontinence. That means that when you lift something, when you jump up and down, when you uh, cough or sneeze, you lose urine. And this is a very female problem. Men have a urethra between this long and this long. <laughs> Our urethra is teeny tiny. And that, the part of being continent has to do with the angle that your bladder and your urethra make. So when, when your bladder and your urethra, when your bladder starts sagging down, then your urethra loses its ability to stop urine, and it, it relaxes as well. So your bladder falls down, your, your urethra falls down, and urine just comes out. That's the problem of being female and, and, and having children. So when we lose our hormones, the testosterone portion goes away, and we, our bladder sags more, our vagina falls down more. We'll notice that we have pressure when we stand up. We can feel, th feel our uh, internal organs, the uterus, kind of pushing down on our bladder and on our rectum, and that doesn't feel good. But worse yet, as we lift something or, or pick, up, pick up our baby or, or pick up the groceries, we lose urine without being able to control it. Testosterone provides better uh, connective tissue. 
at the bottom of our pelvis to hold everything up. So it thickens the connective tissue and, and basically gives you more support for that bladder so that you don't lose your urine all the time. Uh, estrogen helps your continence a little differently. Estrogen actually thickens the lining of the urethra, that little tube that is the last, uh, the last area that your uh, urine comes through before it's in the, um, in the potty. So it basically lines the urethra with a thicker, uh, more lush kind of lining and lines the bladder with a thicker lining. Because of this, um, you get much more stability to the bladder and the bladder doesn't lose urine for those two reasons. So adding testosterone and estradiol together help my patients become continent. And they'll come in and say, you know, I didn't really mention that I lose urine all the time. I have to wear a pad. I can't go work out because I don't want to lose my urine in front of people. I don't want to wet my pants. So they said, but now I'm all better. It's just like before I had children. I don't, unless I have a terrible coughing attack, I don't have any problem with my urine loss. So my urine stays where it should be in my bladder until I go to the bathroom and release it. So that's a huge thing for women. Many women have to undergo surgery to, to actually support their uterus and um, their bladder. And this is one of those things, remember about the mesh, they used mesh to help support the bladder and the urethra and the mesh ended up causing more trouble. I have many people who have had that done and, and have the um, scarring and that type of things from the mesh. But that's the kind of surgery you have to have to actually support your bladder so that you don't have to wear a pad the rest of your life. 90% um, of my patients get better, 10% don't. The 10% that don't have a much um, worse problem to start out with. They don't have any support for their bladder or their uterus. And um, they tend to um, get a little better with this, but it doesn't completely fix it with hormones. So we use the Mcella machine, which is a machine that causes the muscles to actually contract. And you have 15,000 contractions in 30 minutes doesn't hurt. You don't have to take all your clothes off. You just sit on something that kind of looks like a, just a, a flat chair, and it, get, it uses um, electromagnetic force to make your muscles contract, and that builds up the muscles. And so six of those treatments usually are going to be the answer to that 10% that gets somewhat better but not completely better. So, but still, you get a lot better with the Mcella treatment if you are taking estradiol and testosterone pellets. It's a better outcome. So that's one thing that is a surprise, happy, um, happy outcome of taking the estradiol and testosterone pellets. There's another, there's a, um, another problem that women don't usually tell me to start out with, but later say, oh, and by the way, I don't get bladder infections anymore, which is wonderful. We all know as physicians that bladder infections usually occur from having intercourse. And because intercourse, uh, basically, if this, if this is your vagina, intercourse is pushing bacteria into your vagina from, the, from around your uh, perineum, the area around your vagina. It's normal to have bacteria there. Your rectum is very close to the vagina, and so some bacteria from the, there can get pushed into the vagina, and it gets pushed into the bladder as well. This can cause vaginal infections and bladder infections. Um, normally, we tell people, which everyone should do, to urinate right after intercourse, um, and usually before and after, to keep the bladder empty while you're having intercourse, and to empty it right after to get the bacteria back out. Now, after menopause, women are very, uh, they're plagued by this. The, the vagina gets very dry, and the bladder does too. It's, it's an estrogen-sensitive organ. The um, opening to the urethra gets very big, and it's not lined with any kind of protective lining anymore because that was estrogen-sensitive. 
So uh, lots of that bacteria that gets in actually becomes an infection right away. You can't even prevent it by just urinating right after intercourse. So it's something that we as gynecologists always dealt with by using estrogen, either creams or estrogen throughout the body, but a much better way to deal with it and a more effective way is to use estrogen as a pellet. So you always have some estrogen supporting that lining of the urethra and keeping you from getting bacteria into the bladder every time you have intercourse. So treating the, the area around the bladder uh, through your body by using pellets is very uh, important in terms of preventing those infections. They're not good for you, and they can actually uh, stimulate um, uh, kidney stones because for a kidney stone, it just takes some bacteria to, to stimulate the, the calcium to start collecting around the, uh, around the calcium. Calcium is the center, and the bacteria causes inflammation, and so the calcium starts sticking to the to the stone. Basically, they get bigger and bigger that way. So I'd like to keep everybody's <laughs> kidneys, ureters, and bladder healthy, and this is one of the ways to do it. Um, another very unusual um, problem that women tell me get, get so much better after estrogen and testosterone is interstitial, interstitial cystitis. And that is an inflammation of the bladder. And not many people know why it starts, but very frequently it starts when the estrogen level is very low, testosterone is very low, so it's usually at menopause. But interstitial cystitis can also occur um, when you are on birth control pills, very low dose of birth control pills can set you up to have interstitial cystitis. So basically, the lining um, of the bladder gets inflamed, and inflammation is one of the things that testosterone decreases in the body. So testosterone decreases the inflammation. Estrogen increases the, um, the lining so that it can fight basic uh, irritants. We have irritation. Uh, we have all kinds of little um, irritants in our uh, urine anyway. So that lining of your bladder is very important. Estrogen helps build that lining up. So because you take estrogen and testosterone, the interstitial cystitis often will just disappear. And my patients have been to multiple doctors. They've been all over the place to try to find an answer to this because it keeps them from sitting comfortably. It keeps them from having sex. It keeps them from, um, I mean, it causes chronic pain. So they're always in pain. And every time their bladder empties, it hurts. So it is one of those things that you don't want to have. Most, most people tell me that they feel like they have to go to the bathroom all the time. They have to, I mean, every five minutes they feel like they have to go to the bathroom. Well, that interrupts your life. And that's really, a, um, it's really a very important problem to solve. And we don't have any other medical solutions, but it turns out that when my patients who came for something else had interstitial cystitis, they got better. And they've been to experts at WashU and at St. Louis U in my city, and they weren't better. They were maybe a little bit more comfortable, but this actually worked. So I was always surprised and very happy with this outcome. Um, vulvodynia is similar to the interstitial cystitis, although it is a, an inflammation of the area around the outside of the vagina. And it is so tender that if a Q-tip touches a patient's bottom, they jump off the table. That's how sensitive it is. All of the nerves that go to that area, and there's lots of nerves in your perineum around your vagina for lots of good reasons, but when they get inflamed, that means they're very irritable and they hurt a lot. So that is, um, vulvodynia is, is an inflammatory disease that both estrogen and testosterone seem to decrease or completely resolve. So when, when I have somebody come in who's been to all these different places, oh, use this cream, use that salve, you know, we'll laser you, we'll, you know, they've tried everything. And then they came for a different reason. And then they're like, huh, that's crazy. My vulvodynia is gone. 
And as long as they start, they keep taking estradiol and testosterone, it is gone. It stays gone, which I was surprised at and I'm very happy about. Um, we're going to go away from the GU system and go to the hem hematology system. One of the things that happens as you get older and as you um, have years of not having enough testosterone is that you, as an old aging person, you become anemic. Usually that comes from the fact that you can't absorb as much iron from your food anymore. So you can eat the same things, but you're not going to get the iron out of it. So that's going to go to your, to your uh, bone marrow and you won't have enough iron to make uh, a good hemoglobin so that you can carry oxygen around your body. So it's one of those aging things. But in reality, it's an absorption issue. It's a, it, you can't absorb the iron from your food. Well, what makes us absorb the iron from our food? Well, one of the things that makes us absorb that is testosterone. And both men and women have testosterone. Men usually have a higher blood count and a higher uh, iron count because they don't have periods and bleed all the time. That's one reason. The other reason is they've got 10 times as much testosterone as we do. And they don't usually get anemic until they're much older than women because they have a lot more testosterone as they're aging. They don't hit a, a, a crisis point sometimes for anemia until they're in their 70s or 80s or 90s. Um, women usually stop making testosterone at menopause and then they are going to become more anemic after that because they can't absorb as much iron from their food. So this is one of the things that I've seen in some of my older patients. They come in, they're anemic. There's no good reason. They've had their most common reason for anemia in patients is that they have a bleed somewhere. Their stomach's bleeding, they've got an ulcer, or they're bleeding in their GI tracts. And so we send them to the GI doctor to evaluate and see what this is. One of my patients had um, anemia, and he was in his late 70s. And his, he swore to me, his doctor said his whole GI tract was fine. He'd had an upper GI, a lower GI. And I said to him, I can't give you testosterone again until you figure this out. You have to go back or you have to go to a different doctor and have them look at your stomach and at your colon because you're losing iron and you have been on pellets for over a year. It should be going up. It shouldn't be going down. And... So because I did that, they found a, a cancer in his stomach. And they removed the cancer in that part of his stomach. And then, all, lo and behold, his um, iron level and his red blood cell count went up. So then I, started, I gave him testosterone again because that was the only thing that was going to make him go and investigate this because he thought he was fine. But in, in effect, it saved his life. So testosterone, when we've given it to you for any period of time, you get more iron out of, out of your food and your blood counts go up and you can carry more oxygen. Hemoglobin, which is, requires iron, is what carries oxygen in our bodies. If we don't have it, we can't carry oxygen. And then it's just like holding your breath or being in a, you know, or being in an atmosphere without oxygen, like at a high elevation, you don't feel very well. So that's, that's something that's um, really un undiscussed. We don't discuss it unless we see it in our patients, and then we have to have this discussion with them about what testosterone can do and what it can't. But if testosterone doesn't make the red count go up, something else is going on. Okay, three other things. One is painful intercourse. Um, I'm not sure, but most people who have been to their gynecologists and say that they have pain on intercourse usually are given some kind of estrogen, either topical estrogen creams, or they're given um, estrogen throughout their bodies to help them have more lubrication and to thicken the, the um, lining of the vagina. It's very important. Women cannot be comfortable having sex without having lubrication and having uh, a healthy, thick vaginal lining. What happens without it is our vaginas shrink down to nothing, very small, and if you try to dilate them, the vagina tears, 
It's like tissue paper, instead of being like nice, healthy, thick, thick skin. So we use estrogen to thicken that, but I also use testosterone to thicken the skin and to give it more um, collagen. Collagen is laid down to give it more support so that the stretchiness of the vagina comes back. Um, this is another thing that most women who come to me don't think is going to get better, but does. And they're so excited. Like, I've been talking to my family doctor or my gynecologist about this for years, and it has never been addressed. Maybe their doctors are busy. Maybe they're distracted with an OB patient. I don't know. But many times, this is the last thing on their list. But it's the first thing, or it should be the first thing on the patient's list if they want to continue to have um, intercourse with their spouse or their partner. So all it requires is these two hormones to thicken the tissue and make it stretchier. And that's what it does. So within, usually it takes, mm, it depends on how many years you've been without estrogen and testosterone, but generally it just takes three to six months to get the uh, ability to have intercourse back. Um, second to the last is arthritis. Arthritis is there's many kinds of arthritis, and I'm not talking about autoimmune arthritis like rheumatoid arthritis or lupus or any of the other autoimmune um, diseases that attack your joints. I'm talking about the arthritis that they call osteoarthritis. And that kind of arthritis is, um, happens because the joints get dry. Without testosterone, and for women, testosterone and estrogen, your joints get dry and they don't have synovial fluid. So you've heard of Synvisc. We use Synvisc for big joints that we inject synovial fluid, basically. It's, it's kind of like fake synovial fluid into the joint so that the joint can then have enough lubrication to move around and not just grind. So when you don't have any synovial fluid, you just grind. The cartilage grinds against the cartilage, and then it wears out. And then you're bone on bone, and you're really in pain. So then you have to have a joint replacement. Um, with arthritis... You um, and using testosterone and estradiol, you can literally get rid of the pain of arthritis, the pain that you have all over in all your joints or just in your hands. Um, and getting the estradiol and the testosterone in pellet form can actually cure that without taking anything else. No anti-inflammatories, no, uh, no Motrin, no uh, steroids, no anything. I mean, basically, it gives you back what is lost as we age and lose our hormones. So that's one of the things people, my patients will say, I, I got out of bed and I didn't have to like unfold myself and ache as I got out of bed. And, you know, it just, I like, it felt like I was 30 again. And that doesn't just happen and then go away. It continues as long as you take the estradiol and testosterone. Last but not least is hormonal migraines. Many women have had migraines since they started having their periods. And these migraines are associated with estrogen and testosterone and progesterone going way up and then dropping right before a period. That drop is what causes a headache and a migraine headache, which is a vascular headache. So vascular headaches occur because the, that drop in the hormones or some other trigger causes the vessels in your skin within your brain to dilate. Well, you know the brain is, is, is a closed area. It's surrounded by bone. It can't, it can't grow without causing pain or damage. It can't swell without causing pain or damage. But if your vessels, all of your arteries and veins swell, then that makes the whole of the brain bigger and it hurts. So it is one of those things that every time the hormones drop, basically will cause a hormonal migraine in some people. Some people don't ever have that, but, but I've experienced it, and it's, it's, I mean, it interrupted my ability to practice medicine. It interrupted my life or to even, you know, if I had some plans to go out to dinner, you just stay in bed, you turn out all the lights, you put ice all over your head, uh, you may take pain, pain pills or uh, anti-inflammatories, or you may take, drugs for migraines to help stop it. But it, it can last up to three days. I mean, this is, it, it is a real interruption in your life. So um, 
The idea behind preventing hormonal migraines when you're having cycles is to keep your estrogen the same all the time so you don't drop, so it doesn't drop before a period. So many times we'll use constant birth control pills to keep the estrogen level the same all the time so that you don't, but you won't have cycles either. Uh, another way to, to treat this before menopause is to give patients who are finished with childbearing uh, testosterone because testosterone is a modulator of hormones and a modulator of inflammation. So if you give testosterone but the patient can't go on and off, you know, or be on birth control pills for some reason, then sometimes just testosterone will stop those types of headaches. Um, after menopause, I always was taught that after menopause, my migraines from uh, hormonal ups and downs would go away. Well, in, a, in fact, most of my patients agree with me, they got worse. So not having any hormones, not having any testosterone, and not having any estrogen made my migraines terrible. And I had them all the time. So the frequency went up, the severity went up, it was hard to live with. And until I got my my pellets, <clears throat> my migraines wouldn't go away with anything. No amount of medication, no amount of anything, it still interrupted my life. But when I finally got my pellets, after I'd had my hysterectomy, my migraines have never come back. I've never had another migraine, so that's 21 years. And so I'm, I'm very thankful, and my patients are always amazed that their hormonal migraines go away. Now, I just want to be clear if you have migraines that happen when a storm comes in, or if you're allergic to a food and you get a migraine from that, or if sweeteners cause your migraines, it doesn't affect those. I can't fix those with testosterone and estradiol. But I can fix the ones that are related to hormonal fluctuations. And that is always a surprise to my patients because it's like an added benefit. They were taking three drugs for that. Now they don't have to take anything. And now they're, they have all the ben, other benefits of getting estradiol and testosterone again. So these are the things that are the happy consequences of taking estradiol and testosterone for women after menopause or taking testosterone after childbearing and you're in late 30s usually. Basically, it just makes everything more normal like you were when you were younger. And... I don't want people to. Um, I don't want people to think it does everything. Clearly, it doesn't do everything because we still have to have good health habits. We still have to exercise. We still have to eat properly. We still have to take care of ourselves. But it does um, make up for a lot of things uh, that we thought there was no cure for, and it does. It, it's always a happy surprise for my patients. So I hope this helps you make decisions. Um, about how you want to treat yourself and how you want to take care of yourself the time before menopause and after menopause, and if you want to have estrogen and testosterone pellets or not. So thank you for joining me. We, I will see you back in two weeks. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth.